In this video, we're going to talk about a new block type, databases. Databases are one of the most powerful Notion features and will take your Notion game to the next level. In this video, we'll cover how to create databases and add properties by building out a content calendar. Until this point, we've just been working with basic blocks and media. So let's take a look at an example database. At first glance, a database in Notion might look like something you've probably seen before, a spreadsheet. However, Notion databases are much more powerful than your typical two-dimensional spreadsheet. Over the next couple of videos, we'll take a tour of databases in Notion and explore that power. Starting with the name property, this property is an identifier for each database entry. It's pretty similar to a page title and describes what you expect to find in that row. So in our example, every row is a person that works at Acme Inc., a pretty natural identifier. One pro tip about the name property, it is the only property in a database that Notion requires you to have. Others can be deleted or their type modified. This will be good to know as you start to build your own databases. After each name, we see columns with descriptions of the person. These columns are also called properties. You'll hear me use the terms interchangeably. Here you can see a number of different properties that describe the person, like their title, team, manager, LinkedIn profile, email, and more. You might also notice that these columns look richer than your traditional spreadsheet with formatting, color, and interactivity. Unlike a spreadsheet, Notion databases require each column to have a type, literally a data type, which you can sort of think of like block types. For example, this name column is a special name type, the team and location columns are tags, the start date is a date, and the LinkedIn profile is a URL. This means that they can be uniquely formatted and displayed in different layouts, which we'll get into soon. The last thing that I want to show here is that each row in a database actually opens up to its own page. Literally everything that we've learned up to this point can be used inside of a database. Moving on from the tour, let's go ahead and create our own database in Notion. We'll build out the framework of a content calendar for a marketing team. Just like any other block type in Notion, a database can be added with the slash command or the plus sign. You may notice a couple of things here. Databases are a category rather than a block type. Instead, you'll see several types of view layouts for databases. For now, we'll stay focused on the familiar table layout. You'll also notice that unlike other block types, databases can exist in line on a page or open up to their own page. For now, we'll build an inline database in this page, which allows us to add additional context around it if we so choose. After adding our inline table, we'll give it a name like upcoming blog posts. Then we can go ahead and start adding entries to the database. Maybe there's a blog post about our API, one about our latest funding round, and a customer story. To add more entries, we can use this new button. So let's go ahead and add cheers to our first 1 million users. Tables come with a default select property called tag, which we can delete or rename. In this case, we might want to use tags to identify blog posts by type, engineering, thought leadership, general marketing, once a tag is used once, it can be reused to reference another item in the database. We can add any other kind of property by clicking this plus sign. Again, remember that we need to designate the type of property here. If we want to identify the blog post author, it would be helpful to add a person property. If we want to add a published date, a date property, and so on. Databases unlock an entirely new world of Notion usage and power the creation of some incredibly complex tools built on Notion. This is just the beginning. 